Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn all about the Fender EOB Sustainer Stratocaster. There's a lot in that title for a Stratocaster, but let's start with EOB. That stands for Ed O'Brien, it's his initials, and he's the guitarist of the band Radiohead. They're pretty popular, I mean, 2 million subscribers on YouTube, I think they're doing pretty good. But they first started in 1985 in the UK, they're kind of like an alternative rock slash experimental band, so you'll definitely have to check them out. But the one song that everybody knows that they did was Creep, I mean look, 400 million views on YouTube alone. So feel free to go ahead and check out their music to see how that guy uses his signature guitar. But let's just take a look at this thing. At very first glance, this is a very vintage looking Stratocaster. I mean, you've got this beautiful cream white finish with the white pick guard. You've got your standard five-way toggle switch with three knobs. Your neck is looking very traditional, being all maple with the skunk stripe on the back. And even your headstock here is that small style pre-CBS. I mean, this looks like some sort of reissue Stratocaster to me. They even have the old style tuners that you put the string in from the top and then wrap around. But then once you take a closer look at the pickups on this thing, that's when you realize, huh, something's a little bit different here. So we've got a Fernandez sustainer pickup in our neck position. And due to having that, this is not actually your regular Stratocaster setup right here. It's still a five-way switch doing the same things that it always does, but this is now a master volume and a master tone. But you're gonna notice, it says you have another volume control right here. But what this actually is, is an intensity control for your sustainer. And it actually notches at that five position. So that's like a bass, and then you can either boost or cut it. And that's not even the obvious elephant in the room. What are these little mini dongles doing on a Stratocaster? I'm ashamed to say that I didn't even realize that it replaced the output jack. They now have that on the side, and that's a feature that I just love about this guitar. But these little toggle switches here, this is actually a three toggle switch position. So down, middle, and up, and this is just a two position. So this one is an on and off position for the sustainer pickup because this does utilize a nine volt battery. You might not always wanna have it on. And then this one allows you to select the mode. So we've got a fundamental setting, a harmonic setting, and then a blend setting. And just in case you're not familiar with what a sustainer does, I mean, it kinda does exactly what it says it does. So if you play a note, it's gonna sustain that forever. It will never stop. You can come back in a couple of days, kinda like the whole Spinal Tap meme thing. And many artists like to use these to create like ambient music or just something really melodic. I've never actually got to try one of these things out, so this will be an interesting experience for me. And to top this all off, you actually have a humbucker in the bridge position. But now let's talk about my first impressions picking this thing up out of the box and buying it. First off, the price was really strange to me. It's $11.24.99. I'm used to seeing prices like $10.99, $11.99, maybe even $10.49 I would accept, but it just seems really strange that the $24.99. <laughs> But these guys are made in Mexico, and I believe they had to do that because there's just so much stuff on this Stratocaster. I mean, it's definitely not a standard made in Mexico Strat. I mean, you have high-end electronics in here with some premium appointment features, so it kind of makes sense that they made them where they do. But the thing is, this thing feels great. Like, if somebody handed this to me and said it's a USA signature Stratocaster, I would probably agree with them. I mean, there's nothing bad about the quality of this guitar. I'm quite blown away, to be honest. And I think I say that because of the way that they finished it. You still have a gloss finish right here, but the neck is that semi-satin finish. Like, it's not a complete raw satin finish. It still has a little bit of a gloss feel to it, but you're not going to stick to this. It's not the thick, goopy stuff. But on top of that is the neck profile. So it actually starts off as a soft V shape, but then it moves into a really chunky C. All the way up at the 12th fret, it really reminds me of like a broom handle. And mainly being a Gibson guy, this neck feels like right at home. It's kind of strange. I didn't necessarily fall in love with this guitar at first sight during the unboxing video, but now that I've actually played it a little bit, I'm starting to understand why somebody wanted to order this through my new Guitar Day program. Pretty much the only negatives that I can say is the back looks rather experimental. I mean, it's not highly polished here. It's just meant to do a job. You've got the big nine volt battery, which I'm not a fan of guitars that need batteries to work, but it's kind of a necessity when it comes to this one. And you've just got this giant 
square right here. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> and when you first take this thing out of the box, Fender uses this masking tape. I mean, you can see it actually left a slight residue over top of the finish right there. So that's just a minor thing that I'll have to clean off. So all in all, I'm definitely very happy on first impressions, but let's go ahead and throw this guy on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the sustainer Stratocaster, usually Fender shields all these cavities off, but this one is just left bare. I mean, it almost kind of looks mahogany-like, but it is an alder body. But you can see we have a regular barcode right there, and then nothing in these cavities, no grounding tabs or anything. Maybe it has something to do with the sustainer system on it that it doesn't need shielding. But apparently this is an HSH setup, so this is technically a humbucker. But take special notice to the size of this thing. It doesn't appear to be that much larger than the JB and the bridge, but it it does get an extra deep cavity route. You see how that's actually a step down as compared to the rest of these cavities? And it appears to be at least a three-piece body. You can see one seam line right there and then potentially another one over here. I'm not quite sure what this marking is for. It looks like 996. I'm sure you could rub that off if you wanted to. But let's take a closer look at these electronics now. So the neck pickup is called the Sustainer Driver. Again, it is technically a humbucker, I guess. The middle position is a Custom Shop Texas Special. That's a pretty big deal having a Custom Shop pickup in a guitar like this. And then this is a Seymour Duncan JB Jr. I'm a huge fan of the JB pickup. So having one that's in single coil format, that's kind of interesting. The one guy I think of using those is usually Adam Jones of Tool. This pickup really overpowers the rest of these, but in my experience that's usually how a humbucker in the bridge position sounds like in a Strat anyways. And besides the pickups, we just have a few barcodes. That one says the Ed O'Brien Stratocaster, and this one is marked RC. It looks like we've got 500k pots here. It says made in, but I don't actually see where it was made in, maybe Korea. It's kind of funky that the ink stamp was worn off for each of those, but you're gonna notice that the control for the sustainer system is actually a tiny pot. Yeah, we've got a whole slew of wires coming in here. So we actually have a back plate on this Stratocaster to see the actual sustainer system. And once again, going along with the vintage vibe of this guitar, you actually have to take your neck off to even adjust the truss rod. I don't necessarily like that feature, but that's how they were originally built. But now looking at these things from the outside, it is a three ply parchment white pick guard. So just to elaborate a little bit more on what the sustainer does, it acts as a normal pickup if you do not have the system on. It's kind of got an interesting, unique tone all on itself. I would describe this guitar as very glassy sounding. I think that comes from the single coil here mixing with all the other pickups and this thing having its own unique tonal opportunities. But when you have it on, you can switch between those three positions. Once again, that's fundamental harmonic and blend. Pretty much the only one that I found a huge use out of was the harmonic one. I believe that's the all the way down position. It's kind of like if you take your guitar, you strum something, you go run over to your amp and you're trying to do that feedback thing. It's a controlled feedback system. The sound just never ends. And when that note blossoms to a higher octave, that's kind of what that's doing there. The other ones, I did not, you know, get much out of them. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Very possible because I've never touched a sustainer or desire to have one in my life. But if you've ever heard of the product called Ebo, it's a very similar thing to that. Now those guys, it's kind of like a giant pick. I know people like the Edge from U2 have been pretty popular for using those. So it's kind of like building that within the guitar, but then it frees up your hands to do volume swells and other fancy stuff. So it's definitely interesting if you know what you're doing. I mean, this demo is not going to exactly be the best sustainer demo, but it'll at least show you what it can do. But other times you can turn that on and there's just kind of like a weird white noise that it generates when you're like playing chords. So I can definitely see how Ed O'Brien can utilize this in his particular music. But here we have the six saddle vintage tremolo unit here. It's got the short little white bar that just is a screw in style. Let's move on from the alder body to the maple neck. It is just one piece maple and you've got that skunk stripe on the back. These utilize the narrow tall frets and it's the vintage 21 fret style but it uses a nine and a half inch radius. And even the fretboard material is also that satin finish. So despite having the glossy urethane finish on the body, this is still that comfortable satin feel. 
But this should be interesting. You've got a synthetic bone nut that measures 1.65 inches at the nut width. So that's pretty skinny. But then we got 2.02 .02 at the 12. So it is a rather uh, smaller feeling neck here. But look at that, 0.94 directly at the first fret. That's pretty chunky. But remember, it's a soft V shape there. And then it moves into a C shape. So despite them not being that different, I mean, one inch at the 12th, I mean, it really does get huge and chunky up here. This helps to illustrate that. So here's your first fret neck depth. You see how it kind of comes to a point right there, but it's not like a rigid point. That would be a hard V neck if it came to like an absolute point. They do exist, believe it or not. But then you can definitely see that mellows out to that C shape there. So if you like fat, thin necks that are really rounded feeling in the back, you're going to like this Stratocaster. I mean, it really is unlike most strats I've ever felt. But then our headstock, it's pretty basic here. I don't actually see this guy's name anywhere. So it's just Fender, Stratocaster, all your usual decals, and your vintage style tuners right here with a single string tree. Moving on to the back, here's what we're working with. So this is what the sustainer system looks like. You get this whole giant PCB system in here. I mean, it's just a giant block routed out of here just so they could put that there. And it just kind of makes sense that they then move the output jack to the side because it's real easy to get to from there. But you can see all the wires just wrap through there. It's just basically right at the end of that channel. It just leads into that. So it wasn't that crazy for Fender to have to route a little cavity out right here. It just seems strange to not have any finish over top of this. But this is how the block comes from the factory. That seems like a pretty good sized block right there. Then here's where you put the 9 volt battery to power the system. If you don't have that in this guitar, it does not work at all. So you definitely have to have a 9 volt even if you don't plan on using this. And here's what those back control plates look like. Then pretty much the only thing that screams this guy's name is right here. You have a design that they call the Flower of Life. And there's a little sticker that says EOB Strat. And after watching the interview with this guy back when these were new, I think around 2017, he didn't seem like he wanted this to be, you know, you're buying this because you're buying it because of me. He wanted somebody to take it and to make it their own and make their own music with it. One thing I happen to like about this neck is there's a little bit of flame figuring right here. I mean, it's not a lot, but it's enough to go, yeah, that's pretty cool. But this is a 2019 model made in Mexico. And I've got to say, the quality control on this one was really good. I didn't notice anything that was like too out of place. If you happen to have catched the unboxing episode, there were quite a few scuffs. Like there was that tape residue that cleaned off, and there were a few black scuffs. There was actually one on the fretboard, but those came off with just a little bit of goo gone, so no real issues there. Another thing that I kind of find odd about this is they only use two securing screws for this plate. It just looks a little bit unfinished. I think four would have looked better. But this is the one area on the guitar that does have shielding on the back. So, I don't know, maybe they just don't need it for the other stuff. Unfortunately, due to the way that this thing is wired, uh, the readings really don't make much sense. I mean, we're on the 200k ohm setting, so getting an accurate reading within the circuit, just not possible on this one. Fully assembled, we're at 8 pounds, 5.2 ounces. So, let's go ahead and hear how this thing can sound. <laughs>
my final thoughts on the Ed O'Brien sustainer Stratocaster. I don't think it's for everybody, but I think the people that need a sustainer in their life are going to love this thing. The tones to me were very bright and glassy sounding, and that's both a good and bad thing. Like this neck pickup did not get me the traditional Stratocaster neck pickup tones. It wasn't quite fat and juicy enough for me. But if you're into that bright glassy type of tones, I think you might actually appreciate this. And that humbucker in the bridge, it just rounds that all out. So if you don't need the brightness stuff, just go straight for that. But this guitar, in my opinion, it actually works really well with the distorted tone because it really cuts through and gives you a really aggressive attack to it. And that's not even, you know, using the sustainer system at all. I didn't really know what I was doing with the sustainer thing. I probably should have played with the volume control a little bit more to get some of those slide into effects a little bit more on point. But I had a good time checking this thing out. It was built really well. I didn't notice any real major cosmetic flaws from the factory. I would definitely suggest picking one of these things up if you need something like this. But above all else, I'll remember this one, not because of all the fancy electronics, but because of this neck profile. I find it really comfortable. I would put this neck on another Stratocaster. That's just how comfortable I found this neck to me. So I hope you troglodytes enjoyed getting to learn about the EOB Stratocaster. The only thing left to do now is check it out under black light and take a look at the deluxe gig bag. 
Now here's something kind of cool. The sustainer pickup actually glows completely differently than the other two pickups. So that tells you that they use a different type of plastic on that. But you get a little bit of glowing here on our neck. But, you know, we're not really looking for too much here on a brand new guitar. Let's go ahead and check out that case. These guys come with a deluxe gig bag. Now, what does a deluxe gig bag mean? It just means it's super padded. I mean, look at the padding on this thing. That's probably a good inch thick on each side. When I first unboxed this, that was something that I was most impressed about this guy. And you've got a zippered compartment back here. You got another one right there and another. So you can definitely fit a bunch of different stuff in here. And the interior is just black. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today for the ELB Stratocaster. If you're interested in one of these, you can definitely check out my new Guitar Day program. I might be able to help you get a better deal on one, but this one is already spoken for. But thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.